go figure, now it starts raining. We're supposed to have three days of rain and uh, it all, you could just see it go all around. Uh, I was gonna do a requested plowing video today of just the basics of mow boarding on how to get started and, and whatnot. Uh, let's, I'll, I'll still see if I can't get it done. It's just starting to rain. So let's see if we can't get it done. First, the basics of the mow board. You got your coulters on this side. You got your gauge wheel, and this is the gauge wheel. That's gonna set your depth back here. This, the, the other wheel here just floats and rides along, but he'll carry your depth. On the back side here, we got our landslide of the plow, and the frog is, is underneath behind him. That landslide, these old IHs, you know, they kind of sometimes tend to wander in the softer soil. So guys sometimes weld an extension on here, weld a really long landslide, and that helps keep them tracking straight. But then we come to the front, you just got your mow board, the share, and the shin. Uh, they are a very basic tool to use. It's just some basic setup. Just um, The first thing we want to do is how do you want to plow your field? If it's been plowed before, then obviously you do the opposite. If, if you uh, came over here, you know, you can see a little bit of dip to that field. Well, then maybe we'll start with a back furrow and that will shift that whole field in to that way. You don't want to keep plowing. You know, let's say we plow this piece out this year and put a dead furrow in the middle. The next time you plow, you don't want to plow out again because you'll just keep making that dead furrow. Dead furrow is where the, you know, it makes the, the slot behind the last mold board. Well, you don't want to put two of them together year after year because you'll reshape that field big time. So to me, I see fall to the center on that one. So I, I would plow him in. Um, this is a horrible, uh, mow boards are great for big square fields. They are not made for rounded shaped Z fields. It, it's very time consuming. Takes a little bit of uh, creativity, how to be efficient on that. Um, but we just look at the land, how we want to do it. And as a kid, you know, if you had a straight shot, I'd walk to the end, come off the edge of the field a number of steps and put a post and then in the middle and then at the beginning put a post to where you want to start and that way you get a nice straight shot now i got the light bar on a field like this i pretty much just close my eyes and just drive um <laughs> and so but but the the back furrow is dead furrow is when two you know you make a dead furrow with the plow and i'll show you that uh, the back furrow is what's going to come off of this first mow board and, and lay over on top. And that's going to be your back furrow. Um, the other thing we want to do for setup, basic setup, is once you get full-time plowing here, after you get the first couple rounds done, is you want to plow level front to back and left to right. And this mow board, this front mow board, tracking to the wheel. And now it's adjustable up to left to right. This tractor's so narrow that I can't get the plow over to the left far enough. So you can look down and you can see that this mow board runs almost halfway in the dead furrow of the last pass from that. And uh, so it isn't throwing like it should, but that's okay. I I'm not moving that wheel out for a couple acres of plowing you know this is probably the last plowing i do for five or ten years um, unless i really need to shape up a field a mobile is a great tool you can clean up and shape up a field very well with them they they, they have a million positives to them they, they're a great tool to use um, and the other part about getting i know i'm kind of bouncing around here a little bit but if you get into a big wide field how i always did it was uh, you, you'd cut that field into thirds. So we'd go down here and so then you'd plow that field a third of it clockwise and then you'd jump to either side of that and you'd go counterclockwise or clockwise on them thirds as well depending on whether you, you know you want back furrows or dead furrows and, and the lay of the land. Um, you don't want a super super wide headland where you're spending all day driving across the headland 
to go up the field to drive all the way across the 40 and then come down. Um, you want to have somewhat efficient, but at the same time, you don't want to just go, you know, a couple rounds and then a couple rounds and then a couple rounds and you'd have a dead furrow and a back furrow and a dead furrow. And trust me, if you ever taken over an old Amish farm, that's what they're like because they did back furrows and dead furrows every couple acres. Um, but let's get going and see what happens. So you can see the, the horrible shape from moldboard plowing. So this bottom part, that's, that's right down here. The other thing we do is, I don't want to start here. I'd like to make this one long pass. So I'd like to start here and make that one long pass. Well, I don't want to start here then, because then I'm going to end up with a dead furrow out here. So when I go to plow this, every time I come to turn around, I'm going to bounce through that, that dead furrow. And that, that makes for a long day. Um, so we'll start this way, and then I can clean up so I can lift the plow up out there, give myself plenty of room to turn around. And then when I clean this end up, you know, I'll create the headland for there. And up here, you just kind of, you know, figure it out. This is where um, my adaptive curve guidance and I use some of the other features. So for splitting this, this chunk in half, you know, you kind of look up there and think, well, I'm, I'm fairly close to half. I can come in here, I can do a new pattern. I'm gonna make a straight line. Um, and I'm gonna go at a 45 degree. And that snaps that line. And that trajectory looks pretty, pretty good for what I want. You know, you got a full diamond to that side and, and not quite a full diamond to this side. Um, but they're, they're just shifted one more there. So I can move, I can move one pass to the right um, to, to even it up in here a little bit to, to play with it. And then out here, this little bit of a bubble out here, that's, that's coming right around this grass headland. And so I can almost leave that and I can create a headland out of that uh, to clean up this edge here. That would be headland anyhow. Um, so a little creativity, uh, use your imagination some, but well, let's get dropping down and, and see what happens. I hate these in furrow plows because they're a pain in the butt. I love a good drawn plow because then you can put the biggest tractor you can on it and you have a lot of flexibility of movement between the tractor and the plow. You can see on my three point hitch, I've got steering linkage that goes to the rear end. So on these in furrow tractors, if, if you get squirreling around with the tractor, that tail wheel, that rear end of the plow can really get squirreling around. The other point is, is to get started here, when you're in normal plowing mode, you won't drop the three point all the way. So normally plowing, I'm up at seven, but for my back furrow, I need to, to screw that down some and just kind of run them by hand to get to the happy point where I like them. And then, uh, and get going. I just kind of follow my guidance and look for a tree at the other end of the field to lock on to. So we're creating a, you see the dead furrow that's at the end of the plow and the, the back furrow is what's coming off this front mold board. And I try to keep it kind of a small back furrow. You don't want just this huge massive mound that then you have to try to level at some point when you come to finish. Um, but I'm going, I'm going very slow so I can try to videotape and um, plow a halfway, somewhat not very straight. But it's one of them things you take your time with, you know, with the mold board, take your time, do a nice job. Um, you know, it's one of the things to have a little pride in. I'm getting a little squirrely because I'm trying to drive forward while looking back. There she is, a little residue plugging up front there. Um, but yeah, take your time, do a good job. You can straighten, you know, my squirrelies, I can straighten them out as I go. That's a nice thing. You can fudge up, drive up on the land a little bit, hug what you already plowed a little bit. Um, that's where a little time in front of the plow will, will kind of help 
all that stuff out get you a better plow guy but yeah just enjoy the time in your field enjoy the time with the plow and smelling your dirt um, so I got to get turned around here we go so now we're making a nice back furrow without being too ridiculous with it I'm gonna be fudging around here trying to straighten up my pass a little bit um, but yeah yeah so that's that's a back furrow and then we'll, we'll make a couple rounds let the plow you know after a couple rounds then we'll uh, we'll get out and we'll check the plow all right we made a, a round and a half starting the second pass so this is where we're gonna just check the plow um, like I said you want it level front to back and you want it level side to side that's just how it performs good there's a couple options i know the european guys are watching thinking man if you had a rollover plow you'd be halfway done already because you wouldn't be walking around trying to figure out where to put your dead furrows and back furrows and these odd shapes and i don't know why in america the rollover plows never caught on kind of sad they didn't um but what we're looking for in the furrow is that the bottom is level so we like it nice and level and then if you're going too fast you'll actually get some steps like that bottom of that furrow is getting broke and not clean cut that means you're going too fast if you're throwing the dirt way too far then then you're going too fast uh, this here is at about three to three and a half miles an hour so a couple symptoms if if the front of the plow is too high you'll start to leave a hole like this if the front of the plow is too low then you'll start to pull up your sand but you'll start to create a hump here where you don't want so you want to get that level so it's just from pass to pass it's nice and smooth um, your side to side really doesn't have much symptoms other than your depth control gets a little bit goofy and depending on how bad it's leaning one way or the other the the coulters start to lose some of their ability or they start to dive in the dirt um, things like that the other thing on the John Deere anyhow we can put a pin in here and we can lock this three-point from from rocking side to side and that helps quite a bit like I said it's a, a plow is a very easy thing to use it takes a lot of practice or takes some practice to find all the little tricks of them um but they're they're a good plow i don't know how much more to say that that's pretty much our basics of getting going um so that's a dead furrow so if we were to finish let's say we went counterclockwise we would work in and then we'd have two dead furrows together the one thing we don't want to do is let that depth wheel fall in this dead furrow when we're finishing so one of the little tricks is as you get closer you try and make this last pass as even from one side to the other as you can and uh, you, you work it down till it's narrow and then you can manipulate it with your plow and create a nice dead furrow um, to where when you are coming I'm going down this way when I'm coming back this way I would have this bottom in this dead furrow blowing that out that way so you'd have a nice clean dead furrow you don't want a big old honking ditch um, but yeah guys I hope that answers your questions for those that were um, wondering about the, the basics of mow boarding um, leave comments let me know if that helped or, or gave you any entertainment value and uh, for the other mow boarders out there leave your comments on how you set up and, and all this that and uh, let's have some fun all right guys i'm gonna plow for a little bit before it almost gets too wet <laughs>